What is up, you guys? This is Gilly, and I'm gonna do a nice commentary on some Napoleon Total War. Uh, this is a France versus Britain battle yet again, and there's also some uh, Prussians over here. So this is actually Prussia and France versus Britain and Great Britain as well. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the commentary, and uh, well, let's get this underway. So my uh, first strategy was here to get my cannons up first because normally. In the grassy flatlands, if we are using artillery, uh, I always try to get my cannons out first so I can be the first person firing the artillery. Um, it's a really good strategy because if you can get your cannons up first, normally you'll get an upper hand on your opponent. And as you can see here, um, I'm keeping my infantry kind of back a little bit from their main army so I can get my, um, I have a lot of horse artillery here being uh, dragged by the horses right here. And uh, as you can see, my cannons are firing on um actually their cannons right here i tried to take their cannons out as quick as possible but you'll see later in the game that i kind of failed with that because their cannons really became a pain in the butt later on uh and let's just take a look at my opponent's troops here um right here you see some sixth regiment d infantry Ligier. um they're very elite infantry um in the fact that they're normal infantry but they can also spread out and act as skirmishers and they can skirmish with the uh, other skirmishers, skirmishers, skirmishers. And he's also has some other skirmishers right here. Um, they're actually chassiers, um, which means they're light infantry units. Um, he has some Polish legion here um, from Poland, and right here he has some fusiliers of the line, normal infantry. Um, some guard seamen. These are actually very elite units right here. Um, he has his old guard here, the most elite units, the most elite unit of France. Um, this is Napoleon's old guard, his special guard unit. In the back we have some Dutch grenaders where they can throw grenades. And finally in the back we have Napoleon himself, um, leading the charge against Great Britain. Um, I'll go over my troops right here. I got some uh, light infantry set out here. I actually have a lot of light infantry to, uh, support my infantry in the back. Um, I have some Highland Foot Infantry, have a lot of Highland Foot Infantry, which is probably one of the reasons why I won this game. Uh, I actually brought a lot of elite infantry to the battle, some normal foot soldiers, um, some horse artillery. The thing I like about the horse artillery is, even though they don't have as much range or um, damage as howitzers, they can still get up to the front of the battle really quick because they're dragged by horses. Um, right here we have some normal foot infantry as well, and some more highland foot supporting our light infantry. And in the back I have some elite foot guards, these are very elite, these are probably some of the most elite units in the game, or probably the best unit in the game, the foot guards from Britain. Um, and I have my general and horses in the back, my general is Sir John Moore, and he is a elite general as well. So we brought a lot of elite units to this battle. Um, I'm trying to keep my general in the back um, so he doesn't get hit by that artillery as you can see it's it, it has some range coming back here um, I think he actually brought some horse artillery as well yes he did he brought he used the same strategy as me he brought some horse artillery so he can bring them up first but as you can see I destroyed most of his horse artillery which was kind of very good for me and in a minute you'll see I'll start targeting his um his cavalry because he brought a lot of elite cavalry units. This is the Polish Guard Lancers. They are very deadly against normal cavalry, cavalry like my cavalry. And again, he has some Guard Chassiers et Cheval. Um, these are again elite cavalry. Some more Empress, Empress Dragoons. Nice little hats they got going on there. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Um, and in the back. Actually, Prussia has some 12-pound foot artillery. Now, the 12 by pounds of artillery, the higher pound you go, the longer range it has and damage. So, this is some very powerful, powerful artillery. And he's taking some pop shots at my uh, ally over here. This is my ally. He has some experimental howitzers. Those are pretty deadly too. So, um, right now, I'm going to speed up the game a little bit because it got kind of slow off the start. Because basically, I kept my units back. Me and my ally, we came up with a, a strategy. We we're basically going to encircle them. And on the right, you see I have my guys in kind of like a flanking position as opposed to my main army, which I have right here. So, I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. He came in for a cavalry charge, but that failed like right off the bat because I moved my foot infantry I had supporting my artillery up front. And I put them in a square formation, 
well, I thought I put them in a square formation. Yeah, I did put them in a square formation, just in case his um, cavalry got far enough. But as you can see, with my main body of infantry, that cavalry charge just kind of failed. Um, and that was such a shame, because he had his carabiners, and those are the most elite cavalry unit on the game. Such a shame, such a waste of good cavalry. Um, I moved my normal foot back to continue to support my artillery. That's the thing about artillery, though, is you need to support your artillery with other units around it. Because if you just, like, if, say if I put that artillery in the back right here, they could easily attack it because it's not defended well. So you always have to defend your artillery just very well. I turned my troops around and uh, formed all my guys into square. So his cav is just going to get destroyed right here. And thankfully, I did have enough infantry to continue to pursue his units of infantry because he's basically just running scared now. So we'll go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. And as you can see, my ally, he still hasn't defeated the Prussians, but he's making a good attempt to just hold his ground and let him come, let the Prussians come to him, which I kind of agree with his strategy. Um, but as you can see here, he just kind of held his ground and held off the Prussians pretty good. Because in a normal infantry battle-to-battle, face-to-face, Great Britain's going to win most of the time because they have the best infantry on the game. Um, which is why this guy, um, he didn't bring enough, well, he did bring enough cav, which is probably, he should have used it more effectively. He got a lot of his cav destroyed early in the match. And right here, you can see my cav just battling it out with... Um, some Prussian cav. And right here, I'm just, you know, finishing off his normal troops. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward this so we can hurry up and end this. I know you guys are probably getting bored of watching me and talking about this, but... Um, Napoleon Total War, the game in general, I like the game. It's a really good game. I think it's a very underrated game because most people don't really, um, know that much about the Napoleonic era and... Um, Napoleon in general so I think if you want to learn a little bit about you know history and everything which is kind of like nerdy and lame at the same time but I don't really care <laughs> if you kind of want to learn a bit about you know stuff and you want to play the game and have a good time then I suggest you buy the game it's a really fun game I think it was on sale like either a few days ago or so it was like 10 bucks on Steam which was a really good price considering I bought it for 20 um, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary, and uh, that's uh, about it. Wraps it up. Uh, good game to my opponent and everyone else. Peace.